The following recording is an extract from the BBS UK Medical Information Booklet and includes information about how Bardet-Biedl syndrome, BBS, affects the eye. Information about other features of BBS, genetics, diagnosis and family planning, the specialist BBS clinics and the charity, BBS UK can be found on the BBS UK YouTube channel and on the BBS UK website. The medical information booklet can also be downloaded from the BBS UK website, www.bbsuk.org.uk. The information contained within the medical information booklet has been provided and checked by the BBS specialist clinics team and where possible is supported by research and published articles. A full list of references can be obtained from tonia.heimers at bbsuk.org. UK. Bardet Beadle Syndrome Clinical Features and Presentation Eyes The ocular findings seen in BBS are similar in clinical appearance to retinitis pigmentosa. However, BBS is a different genetic condition. The correct term for the retinal findings in BBS is rod cone dystrophy, and clinically, upon examination of the retina, the light sensitive tissue lining at the back of the eye, a pigmentary retinopathy is often seen. The rods and cones are the names of the photoreceptor cells found in the retina, and in BBS, the rod and cone photoreceptors degenerate because of defective cilia. The rods provide the night vision and peripheral vision and therefore, as the rods degenerate, the BBS individual will experience nyctalopia, poor night vision, and loss of peripheral vision. The cones provide colour vision and central vision, so if a patient has damage to their cones, colour and detailed vision will be impaired. Onset is usually during primary school years and initially shows itself as night blindness. However, in some cases, visual symptoms can be delayed into the late teens or beyond. As the retina degenerates and the condition progresses, the affected individual may lose some of the ability to see through the whole visual field. Loss of peripheral vision is frequently referred to as tunnel vision. As the visual fields close in, the young person may begin to appear clumsy, especially at night time. A young person's functional vision will also be affected by changes in lighting. Low lighting and dark evenings will make it much more difficult for the individual to use residual sight, and daytime glare will also affect central vision. A recent study found rod cone dystrophy in almost all patients who had genetic diagnosis of BBS. A significant number of patients have clinically evident retinopathy, while in some patients, where the retina can appear normal, clear evidence of retinopathy can be found in electrodiagnostic testing, for example, an electroretinogram, ERG. A recent study has shown the mean age at which symptoms or signs of visual loss was reported was at 12 years of age although night blindness was often noted earlier. The mean age of registration of blindness was approximately 15 years. Other ocular manifestations of BBS include nystagmus, wobbly eyes, higher stigmatism, irregular shaped cornea, strabismus, abnormal alignment of eyes slash squint, glycoma and cataracts. Treatment Gene therapy may one day be used to treat rod cone dystrophy in BBS, but there is no such treatment available at present. In the meantime, ophthalmic advice and support should be offered to maximise the quality of life of patients with low vision. Correction of refractive error, myopia, astigmatism, and tinted glass, for photophobia, can assist in maximising usable vision. Cataract surgery should be offered where appropriate and where it will be of actual visual benefit. Low vision aids and mobility training can improve independence and confidence. Magnifying glasses, digital systems and voice systems may also be helpful. Consideration should be given to educational planning and if there are disrupted sleep patterns and nocturnal apnea, sleep studies should be considered. Referrals to local low vision clinics and organisations assisting the visually impaired are recommended. Partial sight and blind registration, certificate of visual impairment, should be carried out in the first instance where any visual impairment is diagnosed. 
Visual assessment at diagnosis should include visual acuity assessment and refraction, visual field testing, dilated fundal examination, electrodiagnostic testing, OCT scanning. Following diagnosis, a yearly eye examination should include visual acuity, visual field testing where possible, fundal examination, electrodiagnostic testing if indicated, screening for cataract, glycoma and diabetic retinopathy as appropriate. BBS patient. No one should ever put limitations on what they think someone will be able to accomplish just because of a diagnosis of BBS. When I was 16, I went to the West of England College in Exeter. At the college I learned how to be independent, doing such things as cooking, cleaning and shopping. I also completed courses in further education, including an NVQ in administration. I also did work experience placements. I love living independently and being able to see my friends and go where I want. I feel that I have achieved a lot so far in my life and I look forward to enjoying life to the full. For further support or information, go to rnib www.rnib.org.uk 0303 123 9999 VICTA www.victa.org.uk 01908 240831 Action for Blind People www.actionforblindpeople.org.uk Blind Children UK www.blindchildrenuk.org 0800 781 Look www.look-uk.org 0121 450 7754 Sense www.sense.org.uk 0300-330-9250 This information is meant as a guide only. If you feel concerned about anything you have heard, please seek medical advice from your GP, consultant or a member of the BBS Clinics team. We welcome your comments and feedback. Please send to info at bbsuk.org.uk or tonia.heimers at bbsuk.org.uk.